Bruchem Aboim, thank you very much for coming. The lecture tonight, again, we're in the uh, Gematria series, and we're up to the number 32. The number 32 in Ivrit in Hebrew is Lamed Beis, Lamed Bet. Now, the concept of the term of the word kavod, meaning honor or glory, has a numerical value of 32, and is a central expression of one's essential identity or existence. Now, the universe was created through the 10 utterances by making use of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The 22 letters, together with their 10 vowels, uh, again, com combined to make a total of 32 components. The Torah relates the creation narrative in which the divine name Elohim is used on exactly 32 occasions. Each one of God's divine names comes to express a particular divine attribute through which God reveals himself. The name Elohim expresses God as the master of all powers within the universe. His mastery and magnificence is revealed within creation through the divine works, workings of the of Hateva. Again, Hateva means nature, which like the name Elohim has a numerical value of 86. Now the combination of the 10 divine utterances the 22 Hebrew letters and, um, and, and the 22 times the name Elohim, God's name appears in the description of creation, indicates that God Almighty fashioned the world with what we call Lamed Beit Nesivot HaTchachma, the 32 paths of wisdom. Now these 30 pa 32 paths of wisdom used in creation are all the means that will ultimately lead to the revelation of God's kavod, of his glory. Now through the wonders of nature, man comes to the realization that he must ultimately coronate God as Malach kavod, the king of glory. Now the mitzvah, the commandment of tzitzit, of the fringes, relates to the concept of glorifying God. The eight strings attached to the edges of the four garments a garment consists of a combination of what we call threads of lavan, white, and techelet, of blue, again, royal blue. The blue color resembles the sky and the sea, which are a reflection of God's kisei hakavod, of his throne of glory, under which there is a sapphire brick, alluding to the fact that everything, everything in this world is a reflection of the world above. So the sky and the sea are not blue at all. They are only a reflection of the sapphire brick which, which lays underneath the kisei akavot, the, the throne of glory that God sits on. In the third portion of the Shema, we read the words, Re'item oto, and you shall see them, which alludes to the tzitzit, to the fringes. But translated literally, the word oto doesn't mean him, probably doesn't mean them, it means him. So these words are telling us that by looking at our tzitzit, we are able to see, so to speak, connect with God Almighty. The tzitzit contain an allusion to the 613 commandments of the Torah, the Tariag Mitzvot. The gematria of the word tzitzit is 600. If you add the eight strings and five knots that are attached to each corner, then we have an, a, a total of 613. Again, the amount of commandments given to us by God Almighty. Thus reminding a Jew to remember, and not only that, to fulfill all the 613 commandments which God has commanded us. Now one of the 613 commandments is that any material garment that has four corners must have seat seats attached to each corner. Eight times four is 32 the gematria of the word kavod, glory. Now clothing is associated with the concept of glory insofar as a garment confers glory upon its wearer. The Torah expresses this idea when Moshe Rabbeinu is commanded by God to make the magnificent garments of the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. The verse says in the portion of Tetzave 28.2 that they should be made lechavod ulatiferet for honor and for glory. Now the number 32 is also the gematria, the numerical value of the word lev, heart. 
The first letter in the written Torah is a base and begins for the word Bereshit in the beginning. The last letter in the Torah is a Lamed and the word Yisrael, Israel. And together they spell Lamed and Beis, the word Lev, which is heart. This is an allusion to our relationship with God Almighty, one of a father to a child, of a husband to his wife, one based on unwavering and unconditional love. As is stated in the first paragraph of the Shema, Yahavta et Hashem Elokecha, and you shall love the Lord your God. God desires that we serve him with love and affection. Now, two of the articles of clothing that the high priest wore allude to this premise. The sash, the belt that he wore around his weight, waist, excuse me, measuring 32 cubits and was placed just above his heart. The choshem nishpat, the breastplate, that housed what we call the urim v'tumim, was placed directly over his heart. And as we read in the Sedra, in the portion of Tetzavah in chapter 28, verse 29, where it states, And Aaron shall carry the names of the children of Israel on the Choshen Mishpat, on his heart. And again in verse number 30, where it again states, And you shall place on the chosen, on the Choshen Mishpat, and the Urim Vitumim, and it shall be on the heart of Aaron when he comes before God Almighty. And then the verse finishes with the words, and Aaron will carry the judgment of the children of Israel on his heart before God at all times. So we see that one's heart, a person's love and honor, are directly connected to our relationship to our Father in heaven. 32 is also connected to the word chavivi, beloved, and also to the word yachid, only singular or soul. Our relationship with our beloved creator who is the only singular and sole master of the universe and all that is in it. Now, if someone killed a person by accident in the days of the temple, he would flee, he would go to the Ori Miklot, a city of refuge. These were the six major cities of the Levites. Again, out of the, all 48 were actually cities of refuge. The roads leading to these cities were marked and maintained so as not to impede the flight of the murderer, who, if attacked on the road before reaching a city of refuge, could be killed by the Goal Hadam, an avenging relative, without any consequences. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, these roads were required to be 32 cubits wide. Again, 32. There are 32 teeth in an adult human's mouth, and there are also 32 paths of wisdom, as we mentioned before. Man is called a medaber, one who speaks. What differentiates us from the rest of the animal kingdom <clears throat> is our ability to think and to speak. Where well, we have two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, we have only one mouth. Our ability to speak is so powerful that God Almighty has put two gates in our mouth, one hard, our teeth, and one soft our lips in the hope of helping and protecting us in our use of this great gift. Now the word lev, heart, has a numerical value of 32. As I mentioned, there are 32 teeth in a person's mouth. And this alludes to the fact that one's mouth and his heart should be a reflection of each other. A person should be honest to himself and to others. When he speaks, it should be with truth wisdom, and with warmth. May God Almighty open up our hearts to love and honor him. And in that merit, may we bring Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.